Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Uh, I think both Prashant and Himanshu have covered a lot of ground, but I would just like to uh, reiterate a few, few things. Uh, what we are passing through in India right now is uh, hollowing out of the entire, uh, hollowing out of the democracy. You have a semi-fascistic kind of a state which is uh, which has emerged. And you have, I mean, look at the kind of, and, and there is a massive Islamophobia which is being generated. Uh, look at the kind of laws which the present government has been passing. First, you have the Citizenship Amendment Act, by which accepting Muslims, anybody else from any other religion, walking into India from the, uh, from the neighboring states will be given citizenship, but not Muslims. Okay. Uh, and, uh, uh, that is the Citizenship Amendment Act. You have similarly so-called Freedom of Religion Acts, which are basically anti-conversion laws. You also have what are known as the beef ban laws, which is, uh, is essentially, you know, preventing people from, uh, 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 from eating beef. No, you so you have a whole range of laws, okay, uh, which target the Muslim community either directly or indirectly, okay, uh, and in any event, these laws are used at the ground level to target uh, uh, the minority communities, whether they be uh, uh, Muslims, they may be Christians, it it, it may be anybody. In this context, it becomes very important for the Supreme Court, which has over the over the last 50 years played a stellar role in, uh, in ensuring that the state doesn't cross its limits. Okay? Uh, it, it, it becomes important for Supreme Court to ensure that the state stays within its limits and these kind of laws are not allowed to be passed, uh, allowed to be uh, implemented. Now, please remember one thing that the Indian Supreme Court is a very, very powerful Supreme Court. Okay, uh, Very powerful in the sense that it has a jurisdiction a, to strike down not only laws, but also to strike down constitutional amendments. Okay, uh, It has a jurisdiction to set up committees, set up uh, uh, send reporters, take, take SWOMO to action. It has wide powers and it has been using these wide powers to expand fundamental rights, etc., etc., over the, over the past decades. Unfortunately, what has happened in the last couple of years in the Supreme Court is uh, as, the, uh, as the state has been moving towards crushing any kind of dissent, Okay, because the present state does not tolerate any dissent. Okay. So you have, for instance, the, the 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 Article 370 of the Constitution, which gives special status to Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir, being abrogated by the government. Okay, that case, that abrogation is challenged in the Supreme Court. Now the challenge may be upheld, may be denied, whatever it is. But the Supreme Court just is not hearing the matter in the last three years, four years. Okay? It is, it is refused to, it just doesn't hear this matter. What happens at the end of it is the whole, whole case will become infructuous because, uh, uh, because whatever has to be done, I mean, the special status entitles Kashmiris to have their own property, not allow anybody from outside buying up, buying up property, you know, things like that, which are, uh, uh, which are there, uh, which are there in Jammu and Kashmir. Now that, now by the time the Supreme Court hears the matter, all this will become infructuous. Okay? Similarly, the uh, CANRC, that is the Citizenship Amendment Act, which I talked about, okay? that came in 2019 till now. Okay. And it, was, and it was challenged in 2000 and uh, uh, very next day. Till now, the Supreme Court has not heard it. And now, as you heard, as you saw in one of the uh, one of the clip, clippings, uh, the, 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 the Home Ministry is saying we are going to implement it from next year. It would have been implemented earlier, in fact, if COVID had not intervened. So, so th th that's a second. Similarly, okay, there is a huge controversy about what is known as political bonds. Okay? Where uh, uh, and and what and and the other thing is the uh, PM Care uh, Fund. PM Care Fund is set up by the Prime Minister, where billions of rupees are poured in, and it's supposed to be completely non-transparent. 
nobody knows what money is being poured in there for it's not supposed to be i mean you can't you can't access those accounts they are not supposed to disclose anything but all these things are challenged political bonds are bonds which are uh, which are uh, uh, you know purchased by corporate houses from the government again nobody is told which corporate house is bought how much uh, how many bonds and those bonds are then given to a political party you know, that is challenged none of this is being looked at by the by the by the uh, 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 by, by the courts and these are very very important matters hijab case which you yourself talked about uh, uh, earlier you know uh, the, has not been i mean the supreme court is not hearing that matter okay so you have a so at one level you have a situation whereby supreme court is not hearing the matter at another hearing some of the most important matters at another level you have a situation whereby any state action okay any any action of the state or any legislation of the state okay which gives extraordinary emergent powers to the state is being justified by the courts okay whether it be uh, as uh, uh, prashant was mentioning whether it is the prevention of money laundering act under which today every i mean every second citizen is likely to be targeted okay by by claiming that you are you, know, you are involved in money laundering and once you are put in jail you won't be out for years together till the trial is over trial may may or may not get over for 5 10 15 years you know that that's a kind of thing similarly the so called anti terror law okay again a large number of people who are arrested under the anti terror law are muslims please remember that okay a large number of people okay again here it doesn't have that doesn't have to be a terrorist act in order to arrest somebody okay? just because you believe somebody is likely to commit a terrorist act whether that person has ever seen a bomb in his life okay you can arrest and put that person behind for 10 years again these kind of laws are being upheld by the supreme court when when bail where when you just cannot get bail for years together you know these kind of laws are being upheld and now finally what is happening and that is what has happened in tisra satyabhar or himanshu kumar's case finally what is happening is that as we are seeing and it is not just in himanshu or tisra's case but in a number of other cases like the bima koregaon case or the delhi riots case uh, siddiq kapun's case various other cases the state is targeting any civil society activists who gives voice to the marginalized okay so if you are representing the marginalized if you are giving voice to the marginalized you will be targeted you will be put behind bars on some trumped up charge and you will spend years in the jail without there being any kind of recourse to bail etc etc so that and this not only has an effect on the people who are arrested but it has a very large chilling effect on the entire on the entire society the other law which they use and which the supreme court has upheld is the fcr which is a foreign contribution registration act which basically a lot of ngos the non governmental organizations in india do receive funds from uh, from uh, donor agencies because that's the only way they can continue to function you know uh, whatever they are do doing they have been clamped down upon for instance amnesty has virtually been thrown out and amnesty people have been asked to pay fine of some uh, some uh, 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 60 60 million uh, million rupees or something like that amnesty international similarly green peace was virtually thrown out okay. so any kind of dissent okay is being crushed and and people are resisting the uh, civil society is resisting a tisra satlwada himanshu kumar are resisting this okay uh, for uh, tisra satlwada for instance from uh, right from 19 uh, 2002 okay she has been working very very courageously okay in gujarat helping the riot victims okay trying to ensure that they get proper rehabilitation trying to ensure that they get justice in the court system and it is because of her efforts that 125 rioters okay who had killed kill muslims were uh, got uh, got life imprisonment okay this uh, uh, this is the reality of now when she it is all right as long as you are you are you are fighting against the foot soldiers 
people don't mind okay you do a little bit of uh, against some foot soldiers somebody who comes and uh, lights a fire here lights a fire there you put, pick them up put them behind bars okay but when it comes to the top executives political uh, 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 political or bureaucratic or police executive okay and that's what we were doing in zakia jafri case we were saying that forget the forget the uh, uh, foot soldiers foot soldiers are acting at the instructions of the top political executive and you must hold them accountable that is what we were saying that you must you must investigate you must put them on trial we are not saying convict a b or c we say at least put them on trial there is enough evidence there are 23000 pages worth of evidence they at least put them on trial and that what happened was that unfortunately the supreme court rejected the case which itself was wrong but while rejecting the case they effectively directed prosecution of people who are whistle blowers and who are uh, who whistle blowers from within the police okay who came, who came out with data saying that look yes this is correct the state government had uh, uh, the state executive had ordered certain uh, kind of uh, draconian measures you know so they are they are claim so the supreme court has basically directed prosecution or directed or its uh, order judgment has resulted in prosecution and jailing of whistle blowers and civil society uh, civil society members same thing has happened in himanshu kumar's case so and again as i was saying that it see tista and himanshu kumar are bold people okay they will face up to this they will they will not change their ideology they will not change their politics they will not change their activities because they are sent to jail they will continue to fight but imagine the kind of chilling effect it has on other people okay people who are who are sensitive people who want to do something for the society people who want who do not like the uh, the direction in which the country is going okay and those people that the amount they get scared they get uh, there is a and that's what the government wants that you scare all these people okay into inactivity into not dissenting okay into not questioning not holding the government to accountability okay that is what they want and that is what they are they are seeking to achieve but as you know you have people like himanshu you have people like uh, 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 tisra and you have various other people of course who are not going to cow down before because of because of this uh, this kind of uh, threats you know unfortunately what is happening is that the judiciary has played a very negative i mean judiciary should be there to protect the himanshu kumar should be there to protect the tribals should be there to protect the i mean nobody is disputing that thousands of people got killed in uh, killed in Mus uh, killed in gujarat in 2002 you should be there to uh, there, there to protect them you should be there to protect the tistas who are trying to, uh, with all adverse situation fighting okay. you should be there for doing uh, uh, there, there for that purpose instead the supreme court it's reversed its role and is virtually rubber stamping all what the government has been doing okay in terms of whether passing legislation in terms of executive action in terms of police action security forces action in terms of political action it is uh, unfortunately that is what has happened of course we as lawyers know that the justice delivery system is part of the democratic process and so we are not going to shy away from using it we may or may not lose hope in it but we are going to keep on knocking at its door for more and more uh, uh, in more and more cases it's not that we are going to boycott the judiciary or something like that we are going to that because it's a part it's my right to approach the supreme court it's a constitutionally given right to approach the supreme court why should i give it up just because supreme court is not performing its duty so we are going to continue uh, to do that and i think that's where i'll end thank you very much